Rich here from 2RC Productions and we're here looking at my SCX-10 deadbolt and uh, this video is actually going to be our the start of our LED install and those of you who are watching my other video know I was waiting for an LED light kit and here it is. It just came in today, came in a week earlier than I thought it was going to come in so it was pretty good. I'm not a big one for mail order. I like to go into the store, go into the hobby shop and buy the stuff, look at the stuff and take it home with me. But uh, I was searching on the internet, searching on Amazon and looking for LED kits and I saw a lot of them were made overseas and you know you're ordering them from China and everything and uh, you know the RC companies, the Axial or the Viterra or Traxxas, you buy these LED light kits and uh, they're all made in China and they're very expensive. They're four times probably or twice what I paid for this. So I was, after searching on Amazon, just kind of browsing, I found a company, and they call themselves on Amazon JPV2015 is where it was shipped from, and they're out of Florida, and made in USA. It says right on, the, right on the website when you're looking at Amazon, it shows made in USA. So they're, they're calling this the Extreme Number 2 kit. It comes with 10 whites and 2 reds, and it has a receiver connection and it has a battery for a 9 volt connection already wired in and uh, they're 20 centimeters long they're not that long uh, I know that I'm going to be uh, adding wires on and routing them because I'm doing a custom install which normally if you're doing a custom install you're going to have to do that that's why I was showing in my other video I had bought these uh, 30 foot rolls because I know I'm going to be splicing and doing some soldering so so anyway I'm pretty happy I lit the kit up it seems like it's really put together nice nice quality build Made in USA makes it even better. And the best part about it was, with shipping and everything to my house, it was like $19.50 for 12 LEDs with two connections on it also. Cannot beat it. So i uh, give you a recap for those who didn't watch my other video. I was doing some modifications on my SEX-10 deadbolt, and uh, I kind of dismantled the body and everything. And uh, what I did here in the front was I took the Poison Spider bumper off, and I sprayed it gray and then clear coat. And then I uh, painted the shackles and mounted the shackles in the front. I'm going to have the LEDs going in the bumper. I wanted to put headlights in it, so I took the grills that come with the kit and I painted those gray and mounted them to the front. And then I also changed out the driver figure and put the skeleton head and did some detailing and paint work on, on the uh, helmet along with the goggles and the face. And then I found, when I was looking through my stuff, I found an old Tamiya body that I had from way back when, 30 years ago. And uh, I took one of the axial helmets and adapted it to the body and painted the body up and the harness. And, and then uh, what I did here was I painted the cage gray, as you can see the cage in the back gray to match the bumpers. And what I did was I left the, the light bar black and then I painted the grill silver and then painted the lettering red to offset it. Uh, let's see, you got the figure there. You can see the figure from the side. It looks pretty neat. Uh, the cage itself, gray, turned out pretty nice. And what I wanted to do was I opened it up in the back. I didn't like all, all the stuff they had. You could barely get your hands in there for the pins. So I opened the back up. I put, installed my GoPro mount so I could run my GoPro back here. I installed the switch here in the center of the fuel cell, which is going to run the taillights, headlights, and uh, my dash lights, because I started drilling out the dash also. What I'm doing there is I'm gonna drill out all the gauges. I'm gonna build a little enclosure behind it with some transparent plastic so the light shines through. And I'm gonna mount the last white LED up there to light up the dash. So when you have the GoPro in the back, you have it like from a first person view there, and you'll see the dash lit up. That'll look sharp. I, I installed my other switch up here at the passenger side, which is gonna be for the uh, five LED lights in the in the bar. Uh, I used an old Emacs bumper, customized it, and uh, mounted it on the back temporarily till my axial bumper comes in. I'll use this for a while, and I mounted some grills to that because I wasn't sure if I was going to mount LEDs behind there or if I'm going to put them in the body. I'm still not sure. I probably won't make that decision until it's time to put them in. Uh, the other thing I did was paint the wheels up. I didn't like the way the stock wheels look, so I painted the wheels gray, the bead locks gray, and painted the center caps and lug nuts gray, and then I cleared over the whole thing. Uh, I got the passenger figure in there. The other thing I did was I raised the uh, adjustment on the body pins up to the highest point uh, to give a little bit more clearance on the body. It's a little higher, it gives it more of a larger appearance. 
which for now I think looks pretty good, but I might end up switching that back. I don't know. We'll see. See when I get out riding it how it is. Uh, and I adjusted the shock positioning also to stiffen up the suspension. I didn't like how soft it was out of the box. And I think that's basically it. But it gives the truck just a completely different appearance by getting rid of some of the, the black and going to gray. It, just, it was just way too much black on this truck, in my opinion, when I bought it. I wanted to set it apart from the other ones. I put some automotive stickers on the side and a couple automotive stickers. I put the bottom battery sticker on the back. Uh, so that's where we're at now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a step-by-step -step LED install like we did on Ryan's Patera. And after I get it completely installed and the switch is wired and everything good, I will uh, give you a final view of everything, but I will do kind of a step-by-step -step going through the process. So, all right, that's it for now. All right, what we got going here is talked a little bit about the LED kit. And uh, here is the kit. And basically what I needed to purchase the kit was for I needed the connector for the receiver, I needed the battery connector, and obviously I needed all the LED lights. But basically what's going to happen is I'm going to cut this whole set apart. Oh, I also needed these, the adapters to drill through the body and mount them, mount the lights. So I knew buying this that I was going to have to separate all these and, and make them custom because obviously you can see how long they are. They're definitely not long enough to do what I need to do on the SEX-10. The SEX-10 is a pretty big truck. So I started here by stripping the ends. You should be able to see that there, stripping the ends, soldering them. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I got heat shrink tubing that I'm taking and cutting in small pieces. And what I'm gonna do is put the heat shrink tubing over the wire and then I'm gonna melt it with a lighter for a couple seconds and do that at each connection so I don't have to use uh, the butt connectors on everything. I might use these on a couple joints uh, and then I also have the quick disconnect uh, bullet connectors for in a spot where I need to separate. So I'm going to go ahead and through and basically lengthen every wire so I know I have enough. Uh, versus measuring every single piece of wire to make it sure it's exactly the same size because I have so many running in different areas and I have so many to splice together. And then what I have to do is I have the end of the LED cut off here with the positive and the negative end. So I'm lengthening the positive wire, and then I'm going to tie this back into the positive side. And the negative side has to run through the switch. So I have to make all these wires long, and what I'm going to do is just make them all basically the same size. And if I have a little bit extra on one, I'll, I'll coil it up real nice under the body, and so on. All right, basically what I got here is, like I was saying... I cut the end of the receiver off because I'm not going to use that. I actually had better performance by using the 9 volt. The lights were actually dimmer when I tested it using the receiver hookup. So it must be a little lower voltage coming out of there. The 9 volt actually worked good. So I cut the leads off. I opened up what they had, their connections. You see their connections all spliced together. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm cutting all those wires off. I'm going to restrip them and remake leads with my new wire that are long enough to tie into the ends of these and then I have to tie the negative side to the switch so I'm going to put the switch back in the body and then I'm going to have to tie all the negatives to this and that solder them on so it's going to be a little bit of a process but like I said I basically needed the LEDs with the with the resistors in there you know all wired up and ready to go and I needed the holders and I needed the connector the 9 volt connector so that's why I told you in my other video I had ordered, or not ordered, but I picked up these rolls of wire, 22 gauge, that I can use to make up a set. I have 30 foot rolls, so I'll be able to make up, you know, as much as I need to get this project complete the way I want it. Alright, what I did was I put the uh, receiver cover back on, and now I got the two bullet connectors hanging out of there that I can plug into. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm gonna make up a couple of long wires. I got one here. I went and uh, picked myself up a new set of wire strippers today. The ones I had were made for a uh, bigger wire. So I got me some nice Klein Made in USA. 
are sweet and they work on all the smaller gauges all the way down to uh, 32 gauge so this will work good i was kind of struggling with, with my other strippers they just weren't uh weren't doing the job for this so so i'm going to cut two pieces here and make the two extension pieces Yeah, these are nice. They got the little number on there, and then you just go, okay, 22 gauge. There it is. Look at that. Pop right off in a second. That's the difference, man. Drop my wire. That's the difference, man. You buy USA products when you can. And I tell you what, you can tell the difference. There's no doubt about it. So I'm going to make a couple of these wires, I'm going to put the connectors on and uh, attach those and then I'll have these ends here and then I'm going to start making all my connections. i got a lot of soldering to do. Basically what I did was I just completely dismantled the kit that he, uh, that, I, that they assembled. I basically needed the lights with the resistors in there and then i got to redo the whole thing. So, And most of you will. I mean the kits that they have, uh, you know, they're kind of one size fits all supposed to be and uh, they don't always fit your application perfectly so sometimes you got to modify stuff but that's the fun fun part of the hobby all right what i got here is i got a bunch of heat shrink tubing that i bought various sizes so i'm going to take and cut a piece of this tubing here this is a larger one because here's my sets that i got laid out what i did was i marked the reds with a silver marker so i knew that they were red because you can't really tell once you're looking at them, unless you power them up, and I got them all cut. So I'm going to have two, four, six lights, the bumper lights, the headlights, and the tail lights. I'm going to run off of the receiver. And then I'm going to split the last uh, six. I'm going to run off of the 9-volt, the dash light, and the 5 buckets. That'll kind of split up the voltage a little bit, so it's not all coming off of uh, the one battery or coming from the receiver. So what I have to do now... This is where it gets kind of confusing when you're doing custom setup like this. You know, when you buy the kit, they have it all wired up for you. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple pieces of this. So I'm going to have it. And then I'm going to slip it on the end of the power lead. Because what's going to happen is that'll go back there. I have to, I have to wind all these together. But here's the thing. I'm coming off of my power lead here and I'm going into my switch and on the bottom of the body I already mounted the switch and last night I soldered the negatives because the negative is the only one that you have to do. You're going to basically route the negative wire to one side of the switch and back out the other side and that's what's going to cut the circuit. So I got these all soldered on the switches ready to go and the hard thing about this is figuring the routing and making sure that my wires are the right length or close to the right length. So I know that I can take these full length ones and I can run them from the bumper and a headlight to the power and to the switch. It's not a problem. But the red ones, when I come in from the body and I'm going to be here, uh, it should be okay. I probably should have enough room. Tilt the camera so you can see it a little better. Um, got the power lead that can run all the way back here and it has to run to the front too so I'm going to be kind of split in the middle so say I run somewhere in this area to hit that I have to it won't reach see so what I'm going to have to do on the reds is I'm going to have to lengthen the two reds red LEDs and I'm going to have to run them long so I can basically have this wire up in the front to hook up to all these and then these will be long so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut some uh, red and black wires for each of the reds and I'm going to solder these together and lengthen the reds and then I should be ready with my other ones should be long enough at the length I have now. Alright what I got here is I got all the wires stripped and joined together all the power leads are joined together because they're going to run directly off of that power so I just want to show you this real quick this heat shrink tubing is, is fantastic uh, instead of having connectors for everything being the fact that I have so many here I'm going to use a little heat shrink tubing. All you got to do with the heat shrink tubing is you cut a small piece like that. I bought that at Radio Shack also. I think it was like five bucks or something for a bunch of assorted 
uh, sizes. So what you do is you get that centered over your connection and it's soldered in so it's not gonna come out. This is just to keep it from, from uh, you know, arcing out. You just run that lighter out under that a little bit, see it shrinking up. Don't go too crazy, but get that flame under there. You can use a heat gun too, but the problem with the heat gun is it doesn't center the heat right where you want it. You'll be heating up the whole thing. So that's it. Shrunk that up in there real nice. Now it's protected. You can't arc out. So I wanted to show you that part. Uh, all the wires are stripped on the negative end, and now what I gotta do is run uh, my main negative off of the off of the uh, receiver and tie that into one side of the switch, and then I gotta loop all these together and uh, solder those to the other side of the switch, and then I should be golden on this. All right, I'm gonna show you a solder joint here. If you watch my uh, Nissan Silvia LED setup, you, you saw that I used the Weller gun. And, and the thing with a gun versus an iron, you can use an iron too, a small iron or a gun, but the thing with the gun is it heats up so incredibly fast. I'm hitting the trigger right now, and I mean within a, you know, four or five seconds this thing is screaming. So I'm gonna dab a little bit off of the uh, solder, get a little bit of solder on the end of the tip, get it heat up, you just melt a little bit on your tip, now I'm off of it a little bit, now I'm going to heat it up again. And I'm just going to dab it on like that, get it melting, let off the trigger a little bit, let it cool a little bit, dab a little bit on there, and that's it. The wires are completely encapsulated with solder, and it's going to hold now. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is fold them back. Let it cool for a second there. And then what I'll do is i got the heat shrink tubing in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this. It's cooled off now. I'm going to fold this back on the wire. What I did was I put a split in there and I jumped this off the middle to length, you know, so I have enough to tie into my taillights and then whatever I have that's extra, I'm just going to roll it up real nice and attach it to the frame with aluminum tape. So heat this joint up real quick. You just split it, like I said, get it kind of in the middle so there's no bare wire exposed. With the lighter for a couple seconds and it just shrinks on there, man. Nice. Okay, so that's that. So I got the two reds for the back. I got the uh, bumper lights. Take the camera up a little bit. I got the bumper, front bumper lights, the headlights, and the tail lights all powered in, running off of my power lead, off of the receiver box. Now I have to do the same thing with all the negatives, but get the negatives tied into the switch on both sides. So once I get everything tied back into the switch, I gotta get the body up here and hold the body and solder everything. And uh, this is a little bit of a deal, you know, it's not like just hooking up a, a kit, but you can do it. You just gotta take your time and really think it out and sort things out, and you gotta have the proper equipment to do it. Like I said, I, I was struggling with my uh, wire strippers, so I went out and bought a good set of wire strippers. Makes my life a lot easier, so for a few bucks. So, all right, I'll check back in a little bit. Like I said, as soon as I get the negatives all uh, soldered up, and we'll give it a little test run, see what I got up to this point. And then I'll go on to the other setup for light buckets. All right, I got all the connections tied in on the first phase. So I got the two reds for the back, and then I got the four whites in the front, and I got it all spliced in. And it has to stretch. These wires have to stretch to the headlights to the tail lights, so they're they're long. So I have enough tail lights to the headlights, plus be back to the power, and then I'm going to tuck everything in the body real nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a little test run. I got the ground tied in, everything's there, and uh, make sure that the lights work. So I'm going to power on my radio. I got the battery plugged in. I'm going to power on my receiver. Got power. All right. I'm going to flip the switch now, see what happens. And we got power. So here's the four whites, and here's the two reds for the taillights. So we know the switch is working on and off. So that's the first phase. 
Now I gotta start routing everything for the light buckets on the top. I already have a hole in my body to come through that I put in ahead of time, right here, so I could run the wires through up to the light bar. So, and then, yeah, and then what I'm gonna do after I get everything done is I'm gonna clean all the wiring up real nice, tuck it in the body with aluminum tape and tape everything up so it's all good. Check back with you in a little bit after I uh, start routing the next phase. All right, what I'm gonna do now is, now that I got the first phase of the wiring, all set and we tested it out. I was gonna start wiring the next phase, but what I'm gonna do first, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, is I wanna lay out the holes for the headlights and the, and the uh, tail lights. I'm not attaching the tail lights to the bumper like I originally was gonna do. I decided to change that and I took the grills off and I just left the bumper gray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill through and mount the tail lights through the actual body. And I'm going to put grills on the back to protect the bulbs because the bulbs will be sticking through the red. And I put the grills up there already and it looks pretty nice. So I'm going to attach the grills to the back like I did in the front, but first I'm going to drill them. Now when I was setting up the body, I put the grills on ahead of time, which is making it a little more difficult for me to drill them now. If I didn't have those on there, I could just drill them right through. But I got a little excited. I was doing the modifications and I got a little ahead of myself. But uh, no big deal. What I'm going to do is lay the holes out from the backside and pop the holes in there. And what I got with this kit, if I can find them here in this mess, this is the only problem with doing stuff like this. And I got a pretty good sized bench here. But man, does it crowd up in no time when you're in the middle, you know, getting involved with a project. Usually what I'll do at the end of the day, whenever I finish doing what I'm doing, is I put everything away and wrap it up. And then after about 15, 20 minutes, half hour into my project, this is what my bench looks like the next day. So, so anyway... Here's the, the pieces, the actual bucket, mount, or not buckets, but they're actually LED mounts that this company that I ordered from, this JB, JPV 2015, um, made in USA product here. That's why I ordered them. And uh, these actually, you drill the hole for these, and you pop them in there, and then the LED snaps right into them. And then it says that you can super glue them for extra secure fit so they don't pop out. So these are pretty cool. This is another reason why I needed this kit, because I needed these. So, all right, I'm going to start working on drilling the holes in that, and I'll check back with you in a little bit. All right, what we got here now is I got a lot of the wiring put inside here, and I still got to finish routing stuff. These are the fronts that go to the bumper, the two switches in there, the power lead. Uh, here's for the tail lights in the back. Got the tail lights there. Uh, I had a couple uh, little developments here. First thing, originally I was going to run the receiver power running out of receiver and then I thought I'm going to use the 9 volt because the 9 volt look a little brighter uh, so what I'm doing now is what I came up with is I have a dynamite speed pack 250 milli or 200 yeah 250 milliamp 7.26 volt nickel uh, metal hydride battery out of one of my pro boats and that thing's sitting there, obviously I'm not doing nothing with it in the winter time, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try something. So what I'm gonna do, instead of using a, a rechargeable nine volt, instead of using a receiver, problem with the receiver is you gotta have the wires plugged into the, to the uh, car, and then you're trying to separate this stuff, and you, you always got that wire kinda hanging you up, coming out of that receiver box. So the only thing that I'm gonna have that's gonna be attached to the car itself is gonna be the front LEDs, which I got a lot of extra wire here. I'm going to work that out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this speed pack. And then what I did was I took off it because I had a burnout speed controller on that uh, boat. So I cut, again, like I was telling you guys before my other videos, you never get rid of anything. I have this ESC that was uh, burned out. And I went upstairs. I'm like, yeah, I had it upstairs. I kept it even though it's burned out because it's got leads on there. And then what I did was I took and cut the mini EC3 connector off, put it on to make a power lead, and then uh, charged this thing up and tested it out, and it works awesome. So now what I'm going to do, this is a real lightweight small battery, is I'm going to attach it somewhere in the body here. I'm not sure where yet, but I'm going to attach it somewhere in the body with Velcro. And then when I want to charge it up, I can either leave it right on the car or just pop it off and charge it up. So that'll be pretty cool. But... Uh, the other thing I got going here is the light bar. I got all the LEDs mounted in there. 
and I got to lengthen all these wires because that's the only downside with these things is they they give you they give you these LED kits and they're kind of specific to a certain car or they just give you the bare minimum. They don't want to give you too much. So then you got to add on like I'm doing. I'm adding on all kinds of wires. Uh, one thing I want to mention is, and uh, you know, I always be sure not to swear on camera, but sometimes I get pretty aggravated with stuff. Uh, everything for the most part, the lights were all put together nice and it's a nice kit. And they have these little adapters like I was talking about that they say, oh, you just drill a hole and you push it right in the body. It says that on Amazon where I ordered it from. And uh, they don't give you any instructions whatsoever. They don't tell you what hole size to drill. But the problem is it has this little uh, part that you squeeze through. And then if, if the hole is tight, it would clamp on the bulb. And they say, oh, you just drill the hole in there, pop the bulb in there. And then if you want for superb hold, you can put a drop of super glue. Well, I drilled the hole tight as I could get it, and the problem is the body is so thin that once you pop it through, there's nothing to hold the bulb. So I basically had to super glue the bulb, and I had to super glue, let me pull the car over here. I had to super glue the bulb in there and super glue the holder in there and then like let it sit forever to where it would stay. And then I had to tape the leads down so they don't get pulled on at all. Otherwise, it'll rip the things right out of the body. So that kind of aggravated me. Because uh, that, that's not a nice install there. That, that's not what I plan having it uh, work like that, having to use all kinds of glue on it and stuff. And then uh, I'm putting these grills back on like I had on before that'll cover the lights. And that's why I haven't honestly drilled the tail lights yet because I'm still kind of thinking about this. I, maybe I want to do something different with this. I want to use the tail lights in the body for sure. So I'm probably going to drill them and do them the same way, but I'm really, really not pleased with the uh, that type of setup. There's got to be a better setup out there. You know, like uh, Viterra kit, Ryan's kit, came with all the brackets, the nice, uh, you know, buckets to bolt them. You put the two lights in there, and you put one screw in the middle, and it holds everything perfectly. So, uh, but I want to show you up to this point. We've got a lot more connections to do. We're going to do that battery. So I'm going to continue on. i got to wire both switches in so I can isolate it to shut part of it down. You know, I want to have the light bar separate. I don't want to have the light bar on all the time. I want to have the running lights on, you know, when I want to. And then I'll turn the light bar on when I want to. I don't want to have them both on at the same time. So, all right, we'll check back in a little bit. Okay, YouTubers, one other thing I want to mention here is every unboxing of an Axial car you always see the wonderful bag of parts that you get. Oh man, they give you so many parts, and that's awesome. There is there's drive shaft parts and three links and all kinds of stuff in there, right? You get these light grills, which is awesome because I've been using them. Okay, I get it. But what I don't get is they give you shackles to mount. They give you uh, extra. Here, let me if I can find the tree relatively quick here, I'll show you. But anyway. They give you extra brackets or mounts to mount LEDs, right? So you got a tree with that. You got shackles, but no way to mount the shackles, no way to mount the brackets. They give you no hardware whatsoever. So I have these parts, and luckily I have a lot of hardware laying around where I can piece this stuff together and do this. But what gets aggravating is not everybody has that. Maybe the guy bought his car for the first time and he has nothing else and he wants to put a kit in there and he wants to add a couple light buckets. Well, they give you the brackets, but they don't give you the screws to put it in. So then that means you got to take a trip to the hobby shop or order from Axial to get the little tiny screws to put in there. So luckily I have enough stuff that I can piece it together. But again, Axial, if you're going to put these parts in there so you can mount them on your car, come on, man, give us some hardware for that stuff. Okay, what I just did here was you can see one of my parts drawers here, and I got a whole bunch of bolts and screws and all kinds of stuff. You can never have too much too much junk. You gotta save everything. So what I did was, since I don't have axial specific bolts, what I did was I took and drilled out the screw hole a little bit on each side and then I stepped it up a couple sizes just to get one of these screws in there that I had, the small screws that I had and uh, I thread it in there, tighten up nice. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I drilled that already, thread the screws in there, and then those will be mounted. And uh, then I'll go on to the rest of the wire.
I'm going to get a little mark drawn on the tail lights here and I'm going to pilot these out. Talked about it a little bit in my other video, but you always want to pilot a hole. Run through it a small bit first. This plastic is kind of hard to get started. There we go. Got a hole there. Come on this side. The problem with throwing through this light plastic is as you push on it, obviously, plastic is given. Okay, now that I got a pilot, I'll step it up with the step drill in there. Drill these holes out with the step drill. A couple sizes up. And then we're going to work with them crummy crummy pieces I was telling you about that go inside the hole in the body and then you put the LED in there but I'll end up gluing them again but uh, we'll get her all right what we got here youtubers is I got these things figured out with their with their banking on here okay you have to drill that hole obviously extremely snug like this one here is perfect on this side it's still a little bit loose moves around which I don't particularly like but anytime you're going something that's through this thin you can't expect it to hold itself in there perfectly you know and then you have to physically you got to kind of spread these ears out and then push that LED now I've never used this type of connector before so I'm just figuring it out you have to push the LED in there and then the ears actually boom snap around the outside of it but you got to put quite a bit of pressure on it which I didn't really like doing that on the bulb either Hopefully, hopefully the bulb's okay. Now this side, the hole's just a tiny bit bigger and it's sloppy fit, see? You have to get exactly the right size hole in there, enough to just barely squeeze it through, snap it in, and then pop the bulb in the backside. And then, there, you know, obviously you gotta glue that. So I, I am not a fan of these connectors, but they could have at least give you a little more information. Like I said, the LED kit itself is really nice. The LEDs are nice, they're bright. The price was right made in USA but they could have put a little instruction book or something in there and just showed you drill a 3 16 hole or whatever whatever the size is and explain to you how to do it you know because then you're not fighting it so after doing the two in the front now at the back two on my third and fourth one now I got it figured out now I can pass that information on you guys if you ever have happen to run into this or buy this kit you know what you got to do all right I got the light bar here basically what I'm going to do is I got five long black wires and five long red wires and I'm going to lengthen these because they're not long enough to get through the body to get down to where I need them to be. So what I'm going to do is solder all these together and this wire is so small, I think it's like 20, 24 or 26 gauge, really, really, really small. This is uh, stranded, and this is solid. This is the way this roll came, which works. But uh, you got to be careful when you're making them up. So what I've been doing is basically just winding these things up real, real tight, get them around there, pulling them out, get about three wraps on them, and then I'm just do them one at a time instead of getting them all because. I don't want one to come loose. A little flux on the tip there. I covered this soldering in my other video too on the Patera, but I'll show you guys. I got a, I got a pretty decent gun here that heats up relatively quick. See it mounting on the tip already. Just get a little bit of on there, and I got a nice little ball on there. Run a ball like that. So I want new. A little bit on the wire. And then we'll take a piece of heat. Let that cool for a second. Just one thing, the wire's so small. See, it's all soldered together now, nice. Uh, let's see, what I've been doing is, yeah, just like that. I had to put too much stress on the stranded wire because it's a little flimsier. 
slide that heat shrink tubing on there over the joint. Slide that over there like that. Take a lighter. Shrink that up there a little bit. Get it nice, nice joint so you don't have to worry about it coming out. That's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do every one like that so then I can have a long enough wire to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do every one of these wires, then I'm gonna tuck them through the body, then I'm gonna bring them to the bottom of the car. You see I started taping and cleaning everything up, but I'll eventually get everything taped down nice and routed and clean as possibly can be. I mean, there's a lot of wires on this. You see all this, what I got going on here. Uh, this is a very tedious process. Uh, if you're just starting out, you'd probably wanna just get a basic kit and do a basic setup, but I'm doing a pretty extravagant 12 light setup here, so. But this will give you an idea if anybody else out there wants to try it. You can see what's involved. And as always, uh, if you want to know something or you need help with something, comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, all right, we'll continue on here with these and then uh, update you a little bit. All right, I've been working on all the connections here and uh, getting everything split up. So I got the uh, 7.2 volt speed pack in there, dynamite speed pack. This is from a uh, Pro Boat. Blackjack 9, little tiny 6 cell battery, 7.2 volt, which is pretty neat. And I got it Velcroed in there, and it's nice and secure. And I basically just got all my connections hooked up. Uh, I'm running two switches. I'm splitting headlights, tail lights, uh, and bumper lights from one switch. And then I'm going to have dash light, which is here, and uh, five bar, five light LED bar on top. So I got this plugged in now get all the connections made I'm gonna have to continue tightening this up and I'll, let me flip this switch here see what happens okay that's that dash light and then it should be the light bar and as you can see nice they're all lit up they're all lit up so that's good okay now next switch which I can flip that switch on and leave it on and have the running uh, the headlights tail lights on also or I could do them independently. So I'm going to flip that switch now. Okay, now that's tail lights, headlights, and bumper lights. Which they all seem to be working. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so that's working. Now I can switch this light off for the bar, and I can keep the headlights and tail lights on. So this was my objective. And I, I will say this the kit I bought was just a basic kit it was not tailored to this vehicle at all and I had a lot of work here man wiring and connections getting it all laid out caught soldered you know ciphered out where I was gonna go getting everything tucked up I got to do a little bit more on the top but I got it pretty wrapped up might do a little paint work to blend it in uh, but this was a pretty uh, pretty substantial undertaking here it definitely got a little more complicated with the two switches getting it all wired in series and then having all these power leads and all these ground leads tying into one uh, you know one harness there to go to the power side so we got it all in here now and it's working but what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna continue cleaning up all the connections and get everything set and then put the bumper on and as you can see I left the leads a lot longer in the front because this has to go down for the bumper when I take the body off I have to just kind of pull it to the side so uh, this 7.2 volt deal is gonna work good the problem I was having was putting the lead into the receiver and then putting the waterproof box back on and it was just it was really going to be a, a pain i could tell so i wanted to use a nine volt you know i was going to use the nine volt i have the connection to do the nine volt and everybody does the nine volt right? i did the one on ryan which is fine because i know it'll last the battery lasts quite a bit and stuff but i wanted to try to do something a little different here i didn't know exactly how the voltage was going to work with a nickel metal hydride uh but all these leds have the resistors in them for the voltage and I figured when I popped it in there, I mean, I would know right away if it's going to work or not, and it's working good. Uh, I have a little charger that I use for this. I have a Dirt Track Sonics, and I have a little Tower Hobby charger. And it's got the mini EC3 connector, so all I got to do is unplug that connector, plug it into the charger. I put it on a 1-amp charge rate, and it takes about 10, 15 minutes to charge that battery up. So every time it goes down, I'll just charge it. It'll be pretty nice. So, all right, we're going to get everything all cleaned up, mounted. The last thing I got to do is I'm going to mount it. That bulb for the dash lights, I told you I got them all drilled out. So I got to get some plastic 
transparent plastic that I'm going to mount there where you just see the light coming through. So I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to get everything fastened down, taped up, routed real nice. Then I'll put the uh, body on the truck, and we'll get a final shot. All right, I got the body set here, the bumper's in place. I left these wires long, so I would be able to pull the body out of the way if I had to do something on the car without taking the bumper off. Worst case scenario, you pull two screws off, you take the bumper off. So everything is wired in on the bottom, and I got it cleaned up as best I could. There's a lot of wiring in there, a lot of connections. Everything works. I got everything secure. Every, the bulbs are super good in the holders and everything. Everything's taped to try to limit the movement of the bulb so we don't lose the connections. I mean, every connector I got taped down. I got the uh, little 7.2 speed pack in there, sitting there real nice and secure. I put the body on. I actually raised my body positioning up about a week ago too. The last video I had didn't have that in that position. And it gives it a little more of a uh, you know, 4x4 four four crawler look versus the trail truck being a little bit lower and it looks pretty neat. But I didn't try lowering it down again, but I have plenty of clearance underneath here that I could put the body in the lower position too and it, and it won't hit. I drilled out a couple of holes in the dash there and then my four and put the plastic over them. I got my LED mounted there. So now I'll get the body put on. Uh, I'm going to clean up the wires on the top by the uh, light bar. And then I'll give you a finished look at the truck, a few views with the lights on in different positions in it. All right, I'm just kind of wrapping up on the underbody. And uh, I got the bumper mounted now. And what I'm doing is I'm taking zip ties and I'm attaching the LEDs coming out of the light itself to the frame on both sides. Because when you pull the body over, if the wires pull a little bit, I don't want them yanking on that connection every time because I know what's going to happen. That connection is going to end up failing and then the LED is going to go out. And then the other thing is, I was getting a lot of under, or I, I should say like underglow shining on the frame from under the body with the LED for the dash light. And I was also getting light coming through the body. The body was given kind of a transparent appearance where the light was shining through the body. So what I ended up doing was putting aluminum tape anywhere where there was light coming through. So I got aluminum tape all around the sides where the light would shine. So now the body is completely dark. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece of aluminum tape right over the bulb itself and just contain that light so it's not shining down. I want it to shine through the gauges. I don't want it lighting up the motor and everything under the car because then it doesn't look realistic. So, Okay, now next phase is I'm going to put the body back on. I think I'm going to lower the mounts a couple holes, put the body back on, and then I'll give you a final video with all the lights. Okay, what I got here, I was trying a couple different things here to get that light directed in the dash like I said I didn't want it shining underneath so what I did was I took a piece of that that uh, plastic that wrapped that was the packaging for my um, uh, heat shrink tubing and it's got a little step up so I cut it to fit and then basically I'm attaching it and it's wrapping around the light I don't know if you can see that real well it's wrapping around the light and the gauges and then I'm going to put the aluminum tape all around there and surround it so basically it'll be a little light cavity that the light would just be in that chamber and shine directly through the holes and nowhere else. Alright, the last thing we're going to work on here is I've had this set up for a few days now and it's it's causing kind of a problem here with these wires hooked up in the front of this thing for the uh, front LEDs and the fact that if you want to work on it or something you can't take the body completely off. You got to set it on the side. And I had a little problem where my transmission was binding <clears throat> and I had to take the transmission apart and it was just a hassle with the body here. Plus, I don't want to pull it on my connectors and, and messing up my connectors. So what I did was I uh, went to the hobby shop yesterday and picked up a set of uh, mini EC3 connectors. And get it focused in here so you can see it. There we go. And uh, I picked up a male and female set. One's is for Ryzen Hobby and one's from Lozy, but obviously they're from the same company. So I got these connectors, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear these connectors up here so I can disconnect those. And when I want to take the body off, I'll disconnect both connectors, put the body on the side, and then I can do whatever I need to do on the chassis. So I'm going to start working on that now. All right, guys. We got it, sir. What, what I did here was I... I went with the EC2 connector. I, I was calling it a mini EC3 before, but it's actually an EC2. 
and uh, like I was showing you the package and getting into the soldering of this part it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky it's a little different than uh, the other type of soldering we were doing and the fact that I have a gun with a pretty big tip on there makes it a little bit more difficult um, if you had a, a small pinpoint type iron it would make it a little bit easier but this is the gist of it here basically what you got to do is you got to melt a little bit of solder on the tip you cut your wire back ever so slightly so there's probably any, nothing showing and then what you want to do is you want to get the wire you want to get some solder in there not a huge pile of solder but you want to get it encapsulated in solder you want to do that on every one of these little nubs sticking out here and uh uh, this red one's a little bit longer, so I'm going to cut this back. I want to make sure I give you proper uh, terminology to the best of my ability. I was calling it a mini EC3 because it looks exactly like the EC3, but it's actually an EC2. And I know I have a tendency to get a little bit of that Chicago slang going, and I might call it a unit or that deal or that thing right there. And that doesn't help you out if you're going into the hobby store and you need to pick up a part because if you tell the guy... Yeah, I need that deal there. Or, yeah, it's this little thing here with the deal on it. He's not going to know what you're talking about. So I have to make sure that I give you the proper terminology to the best of my ability. All right, so we got a little. Basically, what you got to do is you got to get a little solder. Oops, you got to get a little solder on each of the wires. And then, after you do that, you got to do the same thing. I want to cut a little bit off too. You got to do the same thing on the back of the other connector, which makes it a little bit tricky because you have to hold that piece. Something I end up using my uh, I end up using my uh, vice grips. Got to hold this thing in there, and you can see. I mean, these these EC twos are tiny. And I probably would have went with the EC3, but they didn't have them in stock. So I went with the next best thing. And I like these EC2 connectors a lot. I really do. And the EC3. I think they make a real nice positive connection. They come apart relatively easy. I can't stand the connectors. I know it's nice when they make a good connection, but when you got to use all your force to pull the things apart you know eventually the wire is going to come loose so basically what you got to do is the same thing here is you get a blob of solder in there and these are so small that basically you put a dab on the end and it kind of encapsulates the whole deal there i said it again the deal see but uh it's actually a pin connector not a deal i like to call it a deal though it kind of sounds good so anyway uh what i'm going to do here is try to get this wire in a spot where i can kind of work at it you almost need like uh, four hands for this but basically what I got to do is I got to try to put a little bit of pressure on this I got to get that better spot here where it doesn't move on me basically you have to put a little bit of pressure on it so yeah this thing is not cooperating with me at, at all let me get a setup here i'm gonna have to get this wire in a clamp or something and i'll be right back and show you this part all right i kind of propped it into a pair of needle nose pliers and then what you got to kind of do is you got to kind of i'm gonna i'm warming up the gun now and then you basically got to heat the connector and the wire kind of together and get it to pop in there. You got to get that solder to, there it goes, heat it up. This thing is so small. There it goes. And then you hold it for a second. Pull your vice grip off. Okay, and there's a good connection there. I hope you could see that good. Get rid of these. Bring it up to the camera a little bit there. Up to the deal or up to that guy right there. Okay, and you can see that it's connected and it's on there now. 
that's what I wanted to show you a vis visual. All right, so that's one, and I'm going to do the rest of them and put the rest of them on here. Actually, I'll do the positive next, positive to the negative that I just did. So we have a set. And let's see here. Yeah, I'll weed through these wires there, and I'll make sure I got the right set, and I'll put the other one on, and then I'll show you how to pop the connector in there. All right, what I got to do now is I got to pop the connector onto this thing. And being the fact that this thing is so small, it makes it even a little more difficult. You got to make sure you got your positive to the negative. The round side of this connector is the negative, which is the black. So basically you can pop this thing in there, down inside there as far as you can get like that. And then you take a small Phillips or a straight screwdriver and basically what you do is you gotta kind of pop this thing down in there <clears throat> kind of gets it recessed in there get a little pop not merely a pop but you can feel it when it goes inside there so I'll pop this side in there that one went in a little bit smoother you gotta be careful not to get too any solder or at least not too much solder around the outside of the connector because otherwise it really, oop, it really won't want to go in there and let your fingers on this stuff, man. Ah, see that pop right in there. Boom. Bam. Bam. There it is. It's in there. So that's one side. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Clip a little of this wire off. I know I already uh, hit this with the solder, but I don't like that. It's a little long. So I'm going to re-hit this side again. Do the same thing with these connectors, and I don't know if you can get the, the actual visual of how small these things are, but these things are tiny, man. Like I said, if I if I would have had a choice, I would have went with the EC3 for sure, because it's definitely a little bit bigger and uh, a little bit easier to see and a little bit easier to handle. So, put another little dab on the end. Man, that smoke's getting in my face there. You don't want to breathe that stuff too deep. That's uh, doesn't smell too good, and I'm sure it's not good for your health either. The flux, it's kind of stinky. Okay, get a little more on the gun there. A little more on the gun. Dab on the end of the wire. There we go. You don't need a real lot of solder when you're doing this. You don't need big blobs of mess all over it. You just have to make sure that you get a nice clean joint and that you have enough material there to hold it together and that both sides, your wire and your connector are both heated up so you got a nice solid joint on each side. If you got a cold lap on one side and the other side's good, it's you know it's gonna fall off. So alright, <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing with these little connectors, get this thing popped on. Put it back on the car, we'll snap them and see how it works. All right, I got the connectors all on there. So I'm gonna do now is, uh, I like to put a little zip tie, you know, maybe a half inch or so back off the end of the connector, just to try to limit a little bit of stress on the joint if I can. You know, sometimes when you pull them apart and you put a little bit of pressure or something gets pulled, it's not like this is going to keep them from coming out, but it kind of holds them together. Gives a little bit of extra help holding in there because you know how it is. Sometimes you can you can really stress the joint under normal operating conditions. That kind of just helps hold the wire together a little bit better. And zip ties are cheap. I got a bunch of zip ties, so throw a couple on there. You can never have too many zip ties either. Zip ties, the master, the master piece, the master tool. Zip ties, duct tape, electrical tape, and this aluminum tape. Anytime you're doing any of these light setups, this aluminum tape is phenomenal. You can pick it up at any hardware store. And uh, it sticks really well, but it also peels off nice if you have to take it off and move it. 
you want to redo it, you just add another piece to it. It's pretty nice. So there's the connectors. So I'm going to get them all plugged up, and uh, that should be it. We'll do our little final viewing video of all the lights, and uh, that's it. All right, guys, I just want to check back for one quick second here. Uh, just to show you what, what the main purpose of this was, okay, what I'm doing here. All right, normally you would pull this off, and then I would have a problem here because I have my body attached to the car, which makes it very difficult to work on. So now all you do is you pop the two connectors off real easy like that, and now you can completely remove the body. And the only time this is an issue is if you're running running lights like through the bumper. If you're containing everything in your body, it doesn't really matter. Like Ryan's Viterra, everything is contained on the body. But now you can do all your service work you need to do. You need to put this on there. And I, I tried it, a, uh, you know, I had it like a week or so. I was messing with it. And I'm telling you what, it was a pain in the butt. But, and it was fine until I had to uh, do a little bit of transmission work there. And then I saw what a hassle it was. So basically what you can do is you can prop your body up anywhere like that. And uh, it doesn't even really matter what side you go. Oops. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I did. Okay. Hold it for red, right and left. Pop those two connectors on there like that. Boom, boom. Get the body back on there somewhat. There we go. Flip the switch on, and then you see the bumper lights are operational. Everything is working the way it's supposed to, okay? Then you shut that off, pop the body up to the side, like I said, and you pull them connectors off. So, it's at the end of a little bit of a project here with the connectors and everything else, but uh, worked out really well. Very happy with the end result, and uh, it's always a process when you do something like this. Uh, like I said through the video, sometimes you change your mind five, six times through the project. Sometimes you say, ah, this is good enough. Sometimes you say, I'm going to add this, add more, and then maybe next week I'll decide I want to change something a little more and refine it. But uh, that's what the great thing about the hobby is. You can use your creativeness to come up with whatever you want to come up with. So, and the end result is you're the one that owns the car and you're the one that's got to enjoy it. So you got to do what makes you happy. No matter what everybody else is doing, you, you do what you want to do and how you like your truck. So, all right, guys, we'll show you the follow-up uh, video here with all the lights lit and everything and a couple of uh, nice shots of the truck, and that'll be it. All right, Rich here. We're back for the final shot to give you a recap on my SEX 10 deadbolt so far. I got it at Christmas, and uh, basically what I've been doing is kind of working on it. I ran it a few times. A little bit in the snow, you know, a little bit on the dirt and the rocks, but the weather's been so cold and crummy that I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do some of the modifications that I wanted to do. So basically, I uh, did the bumpers, paint you saw in my other video, did the shackles, uh, painted the grills and mounted the grills on the front. Uh, I got the LED kit all installed, which we've been working on now, the two LEDs in the front. I raised the body up a little bit. I changed the positioning of the post. I tightened up the suspension a little bit. Uh, let's see. Did some painting on the wheels, which you saw before in a couple of the videos. Uh, I took took part a section of the cage completely out to open that up. Uh, made room for my GoPro mount. I detailed the grills on the light bar. Painted the grills, painted the letters. Spin it around here a little bit. Did the rear bumper. It was one of my old bumpers that I had that I that I uh, cut down and repainted and stuff. I put the grills, cut, shaved the grills down and put the grills on the back for the taillights. And then with the main project, what I was working on now, oh, I did the drivers, did the skeleton head, and then I did a passenger, came up with that. And... Basically now I'm going to show you the LEDs and I have a 12 LED light set on here. And uh, it was an undertaking, I'm telling you, because none of the wires were on. I had to basically splice and add on to every wire, route all the wires. I had to figure out how I was going to run it. I originally was going to run it uh, directly out of the receiver and then I was going to split between the 9 volt and the receiver. And then I decided I'm doing some thinking and that's the cool thing about hobbies. 
as you can think on the fly as you're going, a lot of times my uh, original plan changes by the end. So what I ended up doing was going with that Dynamite 250 milliamp, 7.2 volt, 6 cell battery. I took the uh, old speed controller apart and cut the wires because it was a bad one. Took the connections off and ran the mini EC3 on there for its own separate power source. Velcroed it to the bottom of the body. Uh, I had to do a little bit of taping on the body itself to keep the lights underneath from shining through the body because what I did was I lit up the dash and I'll show you that in a second. So I had to make a little enclosure to surround the bulb and keep the light shining through the dash instead of shining down on the chassis. I didn't want that. Uh, so basically it was a lot of connections, a lot of wiring and the big thing was I was I'm running through two switches which normally like I said before and Ryan when I was doing it with Viterra you turn the receiver on, you turn the car on, the lights aren't all the time, they're shining with the power source. I didn't want that. And I wanted to have the option to run the light bar on top if I wanted to, or the running lights, or none, both at the same time. You get what I'm saying. So anyway, I'm going to flip the back switch here. And that's my running lights. So what I got is I got the LEDs in the front running through the, through the uh, headlights there. I drilled the holes in the headlight, put the grills there to protect them and give them kind of a cool off-road look instead of just having the sticker. I got the two LEDs in the bumper, which looks nice. And I'll spin it around for you and show you the taillights, which I think turned out really nice too. I took the black grills that they give you, the extra ones for the light bar that say axial, and I painted the axial red. So you see the red kind of coming through the black, black grills. It looks really cool. And that rear bumper really turned out nice. That's an old Emacs classic bumper that I had sitting for like 15 years. And I customized it to go on the truck. And it looks good because this truck doesn't come with one. You can see I got the GoPro mount in the back. It shines right through. I had a little footage of it. It shines right through the driver's perspective. Okay, so that's the one switch. And now what I'm going to do is hit the other switch, which is up here right next to the passenger. So now what I got is I got full dash lights. I drilled out behind behind the driver and then in the center stack there. Then I built that enclosure like I told you to direct all the light back through the dash so I don't lose any light on the outside. And what it did was give it a really cool effect and it'll look nice at night. And when the GoPro is shining, when I had my footage, the dash lights up so you'll see that perfectly. And then I'll give you a shot of the light bar itself. And there's the shot of the five LEDs in the light bar. So you got all the running lights, the tail lights, the light bar. And then what I can do is cut off the running lights if I want and just have the light bar on. Or cut the light bar off altogether if I'm running during the day. So I am really, really happy with it. It was a big project. It was an undertaking. And it took quite a bit to get all the wires routed and get all the connections right, running through two switches off of one power source. But... The fact that I'm using the 7.2 nickel metal hydride battery is really cool because when it goes dead, I don't care if it lasts an hour and a half and it dies. I throw it on the charger. Like I said, I got a little one amp charger. It takes about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe to charge the battery up. I'll charge the battery right back up and do it again. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. This is the kind of stuff we want to do here at 2RC Productions. We want to cool, do some cool things, innovative stuff, try different things. Uh, change the look of our XCX10 pretty dramatically. I'm still going to do some little scale features in the back. Maybe get one of those Proline kits and put some stuff in the back. I want to get some trail footage when the weather warms up. And uh, hope you guys enjoy it. It was a long, a pretty long video with all the steps. But the end result turned out nice. So until next time, rate, subscribe, comment as always. Don't hesitate to ask a question if you're thinking about doing a project like this and you need to, you know, when you want part numbers or switch numbers, you know, all the stuff I bought, I can help you out with that, tell you what I did step by step if there's any other details you need. So, till next time, Rich from 2RC Productions, we'll see you again.